Hello and welcome to this screencast about all things polar coordinates in MATLAB. In this video we're going to talk about three things. Converting polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates using MATLAB, converting rectangular coordinates back to polar coordinates in MATLAB, and then plotting polar functions in MATLAB using two different commands. First of all, let's talk about coordinate systems in general. Remember that polar coordinates are just another way to specify the location of a point in two dimensions. Ever since elementary school, we've located points using rectangular coordinates, or what we'll now call Cartesian coordinates, because they were developed by mathematician René Descartes. And as you know, we specify a point's location in Cartesian coordinates by, first of all, setting up a rectangular grid, like you see here on the screen, and uh, giving the horizontal or x-coordinate of the point first, and then the vertical or y-coordinate of the point next. Those are just two distance measurements. And pairing them off, we have what we call the Cartesian coordinates for the point, just specifying how far to the right or left to go, and then how far up or down to go. Now in polar coordinates, instead of moving along straight lines at right angles to each other, we instead move out first along the positive x-axis a certain distance. That's called the radius, and we often denote that with the letter R. And then we swing counterclockwise through a certain angle um, called theta and, uh, until we reach our point, like you see here. Typically, we take r to be non-negative, although it can be a negative number if we want, and theta to lie between 0 and 2 pi. Uh, every point in the xy plane, which we should call the r-theta plane, can be reached by a non-negative r and a theta within that range. And those uh, distances are called the polar coordinates of the point. Now, there are formulas from trigonometry that allow us to convert back and forth between rectangular and polar coordinates, and that's very helpful and will be very important when we move on to thinking about cylindrical and spherical coordinates in 3D. But MATLAB also has two built-in functions to do this. One is called pole to cart for converting polar to Cartesian, and the other is called cart to pole for converting the other way from Cartesian to polar coordinates. Now the syntax for these two commands, uh, for each of them, is very simple. The output is a matrix with two elements, and those are the two coordinates you want. If you're converting from polar to Cartesian, you want xy coordinates, and that's what you see on the left-hand side of the equal sign. And likewise, you have theta and r on the uh, left-hand side of the equal sign for Cartesian to polar. Uh, there's one thing to note that's a bit different with MATLAB than it is when you use polar coordinates in uh, mathematics, and that is the angle is always listed first with mathematics. So this is engineering and MATLAB notation, and it's different from the usual MATLAB notation. In math, we usually write, for example, 4 comma pi over 2 in polar coordinates to mean a radius of 4 and an angle of pi over 2. In MATLAB, I would need to reverse that and write pi over 2 comma 4. Now let's go on to MATLAB and look at some basic examples of how to use these two functions and then how we might plot functions uh, of polar coordinates in MATLAB. Okay, so here we are in MATLAB. Let's do a few basic uh, coordinate conversion operations here. Let's start with a point that would be given in polar coordinates as 1 comma pi over 4. So I would reach this point by going out one unit along the positive x-axis and then swing up counterclockwise through a 45 degree angle or pi over 4 radians. Uh, now in Cartesian coordinates, what would that be? Well, I would enter in x, y, because that's where my output's going to go, equals, I'm converting from polar to Cartesian, uh, and I said my, uh, my polar coordinates were a radius of 1, angle pi over 4, so remember I have to switch the uh, angle and put it first, pi over 4, comma, 1. And then I would simply hit enter, and there we go. And uh, 0 0.7071 is the square root of 2 over 2. And if you plot that point, actually go out one unit, and then over pi over 4, uh, what you've basically done is gone up to sort of the upper vertex of a 45, 45, 90 triangle on the first quadrant. And so the trig would tell you uh, that must be correct. So now let's suppose I'm going the other way, and I'm given a, a, a point that's got Cartesian coordinates of 0, comma, minus 4. So that would put it on the negative y-axis in Cartesian coordinates down 4 units. Uh, so intuitively, I know that I should have a radius of 4, because uh, I am 4 units away from the origin, and the angle would be uh, 270 degrees counterclockwise. That's 3 pi over 2. So let's see if I get that. So uh, remember, I need to put the angle first, so theta comma r, you can call that whatever you want, uh, t if you don't like typing theta, equals, and now I'm converting from Cartesian to polar coordinates, and my Cartesian coordinates were 0, comma, negative 4. And uh, when I hit enter, I see that I do get, uh, that is uh, a negative 
angle there, which that's a negative pi over 2. So uh, the, the range that you get for R might be a little bit different. Negative pi over 2 uh, radians for your angle is the same as a positive 3 pi over 2. So MATLAB does give the, uh, the polar coordinates in a slightly different range than we are normally used to, but it is actually the same angle. One last thing to note about these commands, it is possible to call these commands without specifying the output. Like, for example, I could just type pol to uh, Cartesian, pull to cart, uh, pi comma 1. And that's an angle of pi and a radius of 1, but not specifying the x and the y. And when I do that, uh, what I'm going to get back is uh, just the radius. Uh, yeah, or, I'm sorry, just the, uh, just the x coordinate of that point. I'm not going to get the y coordinate either. So it's really important if you really are translating between coordinates and you want two coordinates that you specify the little matrix for the output there. The same thing happens if you use uh, cart to pole. So now let's talk about plotting functions and polar coordinates. Uh, let's say I want to plot the function r equals sine 3 times theta. So um, I'm, this is going to work almost exactly the same way as it does for Cartesian plots, back to the old style of plotting that you know. I'm going to start with my input values, say theta, and let's let theta go from 0 to 2 pi. So a nice way to do that is to let theta equal lin space 0, 2 times pi. Don't forget the times. And uh, let's put a semicolon there to suppress the output. Now I have a function, uh, r equals uh, sine of 3 times theta. If you look over in the workspace, what I've really done here is create sort of like a little spreadsheet of 100 theta values and then apply the function to get 100 r values. Now to create the plot, I don't use the plot command. I use a special command called polar. And it works just like the plot command. I'm going to feed it the input values first, theta and then the output values are. And that's it. Let's hit enter, and you can see I get a nice little three-leafed rows here. So I can play with this plot in many of the same ways that I do uh, with rec regular rectangular plots. For example, over here in the command line, I could pass it a parameter like uh, quote dash dash r, and then rerun that plot, and as you can see, if I can go find the plot here, uh, it's the same plot, but the dash dash r creates a dashed red uh, graph line. I could also open up the plot tools window and change things around however I want it. Click on the plot, and I can make this uh, a nice thick plot. Uh, I can put a marker on it, and so forth. So we can modify our plots and save them in exactly the same ways that we do rectangular plots. And you got to like that nice little polar graph uh, paper it creates. So note that the uh, angles here are in uh, degrees, even though the input we gave it is in radians. So let's close that out and look at another example here uh, where we are going to plot the function r equals uh, e to the theta over 5. So again, let's keep our, th let's let theta this time uh, go from 0 to 4 pi. And we're going to let r equals, remember there's no e to the x function in MATLAB, it's exp, exp theta over 5. And now polar theta r. And you can see I create a nice little logarithmic spiral here. So there's one other command to use here that I want to show you here, and that's called easy polar. So this is uh, like many of the easy commands uh, for easy plot, easy contour, etc. Easy polar works the same way. Instead of giving specifying exact points for r and for theta, what we're going to do instead inside easy polar is uh, create a string. So I'm going to open up a set of single quotes here. So let's say I wanted to plot the function r equals 3 times sine 4 theta. So I put easy polar parenthesis single quote, and then just literally type what I want, 2 plus 3 times sine of 4 times theta, close that parenthesis, close the quote, and then close the main parentheses here. I hit return, and you can see it generates a nice plot and even puts a little labeling on it. So just like all these easy plot commands, easy polar chooses the values of theta for you, and then makes a plot, so it gives you a, it's a little bit easier to use, but it also takes some control away from you. It's a little bit harder to make the graph look exactly the way you want it to. It also uh, makes it harder to automate the graphing process through an M file or a script. So which one you use, whether it's polar or easy polar, just kind of a matter of personal taste and kind of a matter of what the problem is uh, that you're working on. So that's uh, all things polar for MATLAB, so have fun with these commands and enjoy.